weirdos. Nude science is the revolution. Nude science is the revolution. Hello, you weirdos. Jim here. And today, the trailer for the new Hellboy movie dropped. It's Hellboy the Crooked Man. And I saw a lot of people losing their minds. Now, I am going to be going into that movie and this video as more of a comic book fan than a movie fan. I really do love the Hellboy comics, and I actually have a Hellboy comic book reading club podcast where we're going through all of the Hellboy and BPRD books. If you wanted to check that out, there'll be a link in the show notes. It is on our Patreon, but I really do love Hellboy. And had recently read and reviewed The Crooked Man, which is what this movie is based on. And when I went and saw the trailer, I looked at it. I'm like, okay, that seems pretty accurate to the source material. But then when I looked at comments on other people's videos and sites and things like that, people were losing their mind. And I get it. I get it. The Crooked Man is not a typical Hellboy story. It takes place in the past. It's more of a prequel story. And there is no way that this story being put on the screen is going to be anything like the Guillermo del Toro movies. There's not a lot of action in this story. It's a lot of supernatural horror and straight up horror that I saw some people wondering about and saying, when did Hellboy become straight up horror? This story is straight up horror. And in that, I think that if you look through the lens of, man, I love those other Hellboy movies, I want more of the same. I don't think that you're going to like this movie. And even so, I am, as I said, a comic book fan, and I liked the Crooked Man limited series. I didn't love it. A lot of Hellboy fans will probably give me the, you know, shaking their fist at me because it is looked at as one of the better stories. I didn't dig it as much as a lot of other people mainly because Hellboy doesn't do a whole lot in it. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue, and it kind of ended up, to me, being kind of boring, which is a shock of why this would end up being the story that they put on the screen. But there is a reason that we'll get to it. But it is the Hellboy, the Crooked Man movie, directed by Brian Taylor from Crank fame, if you can say that. I didn't mind the Crank movies. Written by... Christopher Golden, Mike Mignola, obviously the creator and writer of Hellboy. And one of the things that a lot of people lost their minds right away, they're used to Ron Perlman as Hellboy uh, for the most part. Uh, And you get Jack Kessie as Hellboy. And when you see him, he's thinner. He's a little younger. But that would make sense in the idea that it takes place at the end of the 1950s. And this is a younger, more lone you know, loner type Hellboy character, though still people are used to what they're used to. But you also have Jeff- Jefferson White as Tom Farrell, Hannah Margitson as Cora Fisher, Leah McNamara as Effie Cobb, and Martin Bassendale as the Crooked Man. And obviously it's called Hellboy the Crooked Man, so you can guess that the Crooked Man is the villain, but Effie Cobb is the villain as well that kind of comes in and just a little history of it the crooked man is a three-issue limited series written by mike mignola with art by richard corbin and it came out july 2008 through september 2008 now in the story and again when you get the trailer it is pretty accurate it looks pretty accurate to it and you can sit there and say well it kind of looks cheap and i agree it did it did look cheap but Maybe that's why they picked the story again, because it's in Appalachian Mountains. There's not a ton of things going on. You get some rocks, get some trees. I went to college in West Virginia. I know there's not a lot going on there, right? You know, from personal experience, ain't much going on there. So there you go. You're like, okay, there's a tree. There's another tree. There's a mine and there's a rock. That's what we get. And you see that in the trailer, but That's kind of what the story was. But the actual story involves Hellboy going to the Appalachian Mountains where he must help Tom Farrell carry his father's remains to a church. However, near the church waits the crooked man, a miser who returned from hell as a devil, waiting to collect Tom's soul after he bargained for a protective witchbone as a child. Now, that is it. That's pretty much the entire story. 
You end up getting a girl, Cora Fisher, who they end up trying to help as well. And you end up getting a priest. But it's very, there's not a lot going on. There's not a ton of characters. There is a a couple set pieces and that's it. So I think that when you end up seeing the trailer and expect the, you know, Guillermo del Toro, especially the second movie, you're going to expect just full of action movie, full action scenes and crazy characters. They're not in this. That is not this. Now, I said one of the reasons I think they picked this story is because it's probably able to be on the cheap. And I, I think that the trailer did not look high budget either. I know that that's one of the biggest things that people were complaining about. But one of the things, though, is this story is actually Mike Mignola's favorite Hellboy story that he wrote. He liked the setting. And also, it kind of was based on these old Silver John novels. This is not that important, but it's stuff that he really digs. The problem is, will everybody else dig it? Will everybody else love it? Will everybody else be able to sit there? And I don't think there's a lot of people, especially looking at the comments and a lot of the videos, that there's a lot of people that are like, oh, my God, The Crooked Man, my favorite story ever. I got to go and, and see this movie. Oh, my God, it's so accurate to it. And that's what I worry about. Even the idea of people saying, why is this horror? I want action. It's not that. I think people will be turned off by that. Obviously, the, the uh, cost of things, it, it did look a little cheap. There's a Hellboy that's a little younger, but not somebody they're used to. And I think that this might not do well. And it's a shame because I think that it does look pretty accurate to the comic book and what little scenes we get. And I'll tell you, there are some bigger scenes in the story that I don't think they're able to show because it would spoil some things. But even then, it's kind of a a drab plotting story. It's a story of supernatural, not revenge, but the idea of, you know, maybe doing things that you shouldn't do and they come to bite you in the butt later, that sort of thing. But it's more, you know, cerebral then action packed and I ain't no smart guy. So it's one of those things, as I said earlier, I like the story enough. I didn't love it. And I do think that people are going to have a problem with this. I, I think that it's going to be one of those that will not do well in the theater. Maybe it will get some legs when it hits, you know, digital or whatever people do nowadays. I don't know. Zap it right to your brain, all that stuff. Maybe it will pick up some deal there or maybe it will be more accepted by the horror crowd that isn't really there for an action movie like i think a lot of people and i saw a lot of people who said you know why didn't they just like guillermo del toro continue his deal get ron Perlman back all that stuff going on and i it's not going to happen that way and this is what we're going to get and i think that mike mignola is not looking past the things that he loves and kind of envisioning what would work on the screen. I remember when we were actually reading The Crooked Man on our podcast, and the guy Simon, who I do it with, mentioned, oh, they're going to do a movie based on this story. And I, really? This de- It definitely didn't feel like something you're reading and say, this needs to be right on the screen. Like, oh, my God, I can see this on the silver screen right now. Not at all. It felt like a indie type comic deal that, you know, you read and done and whatnot. But yeah, it's it's straight up horror. I'm sure they're going to have Hellboy do a little more than he does in the comic, especially dialogue wise, because he doesn't talk a lot. But they may play the loner aspect even more on the screen and have the young Hellboy not saying much. But I think that people aren't going to aren't going to go and see it, unfortunately. But. I'll check it out. I'll check it out when it comes out. I'm not really a movie guy. I'm more of a comic book guy. That's why I came at it in this side of things. And maybe if anybody, you know, was slightly interested in the trailer, that's the other thing. Just as a full out reaction to the trailer, I didn't think it was that interesting. And I ended up, I liked the story enough, but just visually, just the whole thing, it didn't really grab me at all. But if you are looking to read the source material, if you're looking to read the comics, I'll probably put a link in the uh, deal of the description of the video so that you can go and maybe click on and find those comics and, and see what it's more about. But that is it. Everybody who is listening still of my babblings, thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, going to the end. 
Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Please tell me what you think of the trailer. Please tell me what you think of all this. And I didn't mention earlier, I should have, the idea of having the trailer playing or even stills from the movie. I tried to do that once, and it ended up getting copywritten struck, so I had to pretty much put the comic stuff on instead. So that is why. There is comic book stuff here, but thanks a lot, everybody, and let me know what you think. And if you like me doing things that are a little beyond the comics, let me know, and I will continue doing a little bit of that as well. But thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.